Viewer discretion is advised. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Train Sim World. My name is Yo Adrian and today we are going to be taking a look at the Oakville sub finally. I know it came out uh, about a week or two ago now and we're finally actually getting into the Oakville sub. So today we're actually going to be doing the training modules and I always end up forgetting to do these back whenever new DLC comes out for TSW, I always end up forgetting to do these. So today we're actually going to be taking a look at the GP9RM intro. And then tomorrow, or later on today, depending on if I want to do a dual upload or not, we'll do the GP38-2 intro with the uh, possible ethanol loading introduction. I don't know about that one. But we'll definitely be doing these two so you guys know how to, if you guys don't have the game yet, so you guys know how to operate the locomotives. Turn them on, all that fun stuff. But basically, yeah, learning the basics of operating a GP9 RM diesel locomotive and switching cars around a yard. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in the scenario and see what it's all about. Okay, so there are the GP9 RM locomotives, a staple in Canada for the most part. Very rarely do these make it to the U.S. This brief introduction will cover switching cars. Enter through the door indicated. Okay. Climb aboard to get started. Climb aboard to get started. TN4. Climbing up them steps over here. And they want me to go through this door, so let's go ahead and do that. A lot of time will be spent in the engineer's seat. Oh, I thought it said second man seat. My bad. I said any available seat. <laughs> Start by inserting the reverser handle. Done. Activate the auxiliary systems as indicated. Generator field. Brake cutout to this freight. This locomotive requires the brake cutout valve to be set to freight. The automatic brake is the main system used for slowing down the train. I'm just going to let this guy talk for the most part too, so it's not just going to be me, it's going to be this guy as well for both the training modules. So just letting you guys know. We'll do get some scenarios and stuff of this route as well once we are done with this. Banking com is used to control the power of locomotives located throughout a train. Okay, so they want us to reach 10 miles an hour. We can definitely do that. Had to go get a little screenshot for the thumbnail back there. So that's what we didn't see it throttling up for the first time though. It's a very nice looking cab. You got different class lights and stuff you can control over here it looks like. You got speedometer up there which is a weird spot for a speedometer. Reduce the power to zero and allow the draw forward to the indicated location. Copy that, copy that. It's all this cab light, gauge lights, all that fun stuff, and then we got steps. Stop short, release the brake, and apply power again. And you got step lights and all that fun stuff, so. We have actually have a train today? No, we're just two light engines. So we can actually use the independent brake to stop this train. Two three heater switches, interesting. I think we're going to stop just short. Yep. There we go. Rear headlights, bell, all that fun stuff. And there's also some stuff back here that we can turn on and off and all that crap as well. So yeah, it's a very nice looking model. But yeah, that's the only downfall is that this is like a Canadian based train. These don't really make it into the U.S. Switches in this yard are manually operated. This means they require the lever next to them to be moved by hand. Well, that's nice. Which way am I supposed to be going? Climb down from the cab, walk over, and operate the indicated switch lever. Okay, so we're going to walk back. Usually the conductor will be doing this, not us, but you know. We'll end up doing it, I guess. 
We want this one switched to the left track. There we go. Now we head back into our engineer seat over here. Those look like some very like easily breakable ditch lights. I'm sorry, but they really do. They don't look durable whatsoever. Climb up the steps over here. Come on board. Keep well, let's keep the door open just in case we need to. Couple of the tankers. Reverse you. Turn you into release. And here we go. Sounds like a default trains simulator horn. Trains, Orion trains. That sounds like one of their default horns, and I don't really know if I like that or not. <clears throat> Here's a fuse cabinet back here. Got a whole bunch of shit we can turn on. We'll probably go over that in a later episode. Can't use the radio, which kind of sucks. Cannot use the radio. But I have a feeling we're going to that middle set of tank cars. That's just my guess. I don't officially know. Maybe not. Well, maybe. No. The first set. Middle set? I don't know. Nope, the first set. Close enough. Well, technically, if you count those back there, it would be the middle set. Alright. Open up the window, because it's nice outside today. Go ahead and start slowing you down. So that turned on. Oh, that's pretty cool. The rear headlights will like turn on if that thing is, or that thing will turn on with the lights saying that the the uh, what you call it headlights are on. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and all released. Cool. Alright, let's go and turn some class lights on, because I kind of want to see what the class lights look like. Ooh, those look nice. Let's try white. And let's try red. I don't know why, but my favorite are the green. So I'm going to put the two green ones on, because those are like my favorite lights. I'm not sure why, it just, they just kind of are. So we'll just do the two greens and I'm not really quite sure what the class lights are like supposed to mean if it's like supposed to mean like a freight like a special freight or like passenger or like a mixed freight or something like that I'm not really quite sure what it's supposed to act they actually mean but how do we turn the ditch lights on ditch lights aha interesting awesome we turn we know how to turn on ditch lights now so Adrian's good Adrian is good <laughs> A little bell hanging up up there. Usually the bell's like underneath, but it's kind of cool how it's like hanging up up there. That's really awesome. Then we got, I think, six tankers that we're taking. About six tankers. Okay. Very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. So we're stopping over there at the yard exit. So we want to use the train brakes now since we don't actually have a, uh, since we actually have cars, so we're going to use the train brakes. So I guess the limit on this train is 65 miles an hour. We can do that. Indicator light panel. There we go. So now we gotta set the switch yet again, which is the conductor's job, but it's supposedly acting like it's our job. Here we go. Nice little D DTGX tankers. I actually found a mod that actually brings a real company to these tanker cars. So I might actually put that in instead of it being T DTGX. I think it's some... Um, I don't exactly remember what company it is. But... I'm going to end up putting those in so we actually have some like real life tanker cars 
and like actual real life freight cars so they're not all DTGX because I think DTGX stands for Dovetail Games. So they have like their own line of tank cars now and stuff like that and I just don't think that that's honestly realistic at my point. I mean it's cool to have like another like rail or uh, rail company in here but I'm just going to go ahead and switch it out for the real ones just to kind of add them merch and stuff like that even though it's like not even that noticeable. But I kind of hope that sooner or later you can have like different variants for these cars and stuff like that. So instead of it being like one tanker car is DTGX and then like ACFX and then, you know, stuff like that. I feel like that would be amazing if that could actually happen. But one day, maybe one day. Same thing with like the locomotive. So like you have that CP, CN GP38-2. Well, maybe someone can make like an IC GP38-2 or Grand Trunk Western or something like that BNSF. And you can actually have both in the game. And I'm hoping that one day you can actually have like consist builders. Like a consist builder in this game. I feel like that would be awesome as well. So you can like create your own consist and whatnot. That would be pretty cool. That's one thing that I'm actually waiting for in this game. Is so I can make my own consist and like you know pull my own train and stuff. So I can maybe have like the csx pulling these things so they're like a new owner or something like that since you know they don't have the cn markings on the side you can maybe do like them on the heavy haul route to where like csx is bringing these two to like a new owner or something like that i don't know that's just me but i, I like the sound of that i um, just don't know how to actually do it if you can let me know down in the comments if you guys know if you guys there is a like a root builder or consist builder or something like that so it'd be kind of cool having like you know some peop people bringing like their own like third party routes and like freeware routes and stuff like that like kind of on the steam workshop type deal make like your own scenarios and stuff like that so i feel like that would be pretty awesome to do and i'm hoping that it can get done soon but i want to be over here because i want to know how far we have to stop the eot device on the rear of this train here but yeah see as you see here dtgx is everything and then the uh, actual auto racks are cn which is good well, we're going to start slowing down here. Only because of the cars coming up. When a couple at less than... They usually say less than two, 5 miles an hour, but I like to go less than 2. At least 2 or less. There we go. Let the air come in. Go ahead and sit in the engineer's seat. And we're going to uncouple... Petrochemicals, which means we have to walk outside for this. So I feel like we're either getting a manifest train or a tank train, like a tanker car train ready. Old train for the most part. I feel like that's what we're doing here. We gotta unlock, we gotta go on this side because we gotta unlock that thing, I guess. Unlocked. There we go, uncoupled, and we'll go and stop at the yard, the yard exit yet again. But yeah, I'm very excited for this actual route for the Oakville sub. I was excited for it, and then some life stuff happened to where I couldn't stream it that same day and everything. So now we are back in and showcasing it. Air sounds kind of... The air brakes kind of sound realistic though, which is nice. Sounds a lot better than an actual train simulator. Hopefully those cars ain't following us. They are not perfect. The one thing I do not like about this is that like it says plus 9. So that means it's going, going to go up to 9 miles an hour with the uh, throttle setting that you have for the most part. That's the one thing I do not like about this locomotive because that's the same thing Microsoft Train Simulator did with theirs. And that's just something I do not like. So if we move the throttle up, it'll say 7. Now it's saying 12, 18, 22, you know. It's just telling you what speed you'll be going at with that throttle at that setting at, like, the grade that you're at right now, basically, for the most part. I don't care for it. We got a short time rating here. Let's go ahead and set the brake. Here we go. Almost there. Cut the power. There we go. 
Now I gotta go back to the right track here. Go down backwards like normal. It's probably gonna have me switch out some more cars is what I'm assuming. Uh. Maybe, I don't know. So we're gonna set this to the right. And then we're gonna set this one to the right. And then set this one to the left. And then go set this one to the left. And then go back to the engineer seat. Man, that EOT is fucking bright. You can see it flashing from here. That thing is bright as hell, man. That's pretty cool. And then you get closer to it, it's very dim. That's funny. And you get so close to it, it's very, very, very dim right now. <laughs> Good climb of that. Keep the overlay back on. Fire extinguisher is inside the cab. There we go. Sit in that seat. Put you in reverse. Handle off. Cut out. Bursar is in neutral. Remove it. Head to the front locomotive. Okay, I don't know why we're going to the front locomotive. But I'm wondering if it's just training to get you so you know how to like do an MU, I guess, per se. I don't know. Not for certain. Oh, right up here. Cause I don't think in real life they'll have you change cabs like this just to reverse. I don't think they will. I don't know though. Insert that handle. Gonna set that to freight. So we're gonna basically turn this locomotive on just to move this back to the track that we were basically on. Well, this one has a crew alarm. That one didn't, I don't think. 4128. So over speed is 67 miles an hour. Well, I guess for the most part, you can kind of use those as marker lights too if you're like traveling backwards. Move around the freight cars, set the direction of travel, and apply power to get moving. Okay, so for some reason it's not letting me go anywhere. I hear a compressor or something going on, but I follow the instructions like it said for me to do. But I mean, basically all we really pretty much have to do left is get moving, go stop at the track switch and then we have to couple on to more tankers so yeah i don't know it's not letting me do anything so we're just going to cut the scenario here hope you guys did enjoy smash that like button drop a comment let me know what you're thinking as well as hit that subscribe button you guys are awesome and i'll catch you guys on the next one peace